If I were to get some liquid nitrogen and put my hand in it, how long would it take before my hand would freeze? So, this is the end of the week in Germany. And so, I've now got an array of all sorts of interesting things. Um, which I'm just going to do some fun stuff with. So this black, evil-looking liquid here is actually copper bromide. Uh, and that dark colour really screwed us over because what we were looking for was actually explosions in the solution. Go in, let's pick it up. Oh! Yeah. oh. through it, that's no good and we need a nice concentrated solution like that. But this is the interesting thing about things like copper bromide, is if you dilute them a little, they change colour to green and If I remember rightly, I think they get blue if you dilute them a little more, which is kind of, kind of fun. Anyway, so that's copper bromide. Up next, a question that has dogged mankind for centuries is if I were to get some liquid nitrogen and put my hand in it, how long would it take before my hand would freeze? So, first of all, I'm going to need some liquid nitrogen. So. Now, liquid nitrogen is mostly harmless. So that's the liquid ammonia we've been using all week. And that is the nitrogen, and I need a refill. So, let's make it up again. The metal gets really cold and you get some really quite nasty burns off the metal. The liquid nitrogen, however, you can sort of move your finger around quite easily and keep it there for too long. But comes the real question if I were to fill that thing there with liquid nitrogen, how long could I put my hand in before it freezes absolutely solid? So for this, I will need one extra thing. My knife, kitty poker. Also, called sodium cutter. So, um, in science, we'll quite often use things, uh, we'll use proxies. So rather than actually sticking my hands in there, I'm going to use something that's about the same texture as my uh, hand. And since I'm in Germany, I'm going to use these sausages. Um, right, and we will see how long that takes to freeze solid. Right, in the first instance I'm just going to put some liquid nitrogen in here, just cool it down a little. Okay, I didn't quite expect that. Oh, the joy of science. Okay, important safety hint. The uh, Perspex does not hold cold things very well. I didn't expect that at all. Oh well. Back in the big city. Right. So we'll go to plan B. We'll use the whole thermos thing that I've been using all week. That's not quite pretty. That's the yeah, general idea. Oh, we could use a glass. Glass would be okay. This has got a solid base on it as well, it's not a crash. Well, let's see, we'll need a clean glass. So I've got some methanol. Methanol is very good for uh, uh, thin frost off stuff. Especially if you want to be able to see through afterwards. Well, I've missed time with my face shield because my glass is much more of a problem 
Then flying perspex. Now this will flop like a son of a bitch because that's uh, that's the methanol they can into to begin with. <laughs> methanol is quite entertaining. It gives much thicker vapour than um, water. So once that's more or less down to... Okay. Important safety lesson mark two. Glass. It's more of a point thick glass. It doesn't take liquid nitrogen very well. Okay. So, that's liquid nitrogen in a very cracked glass. Okay, now I'm just going to do what I can. So we now have some methanol in a wash bottle. Now this, the reason this is great is because you can now just clean off the, uh, the frost. It doesn't actually help that much. But, okay, so now we have liquid nitrogen in a glass. Oh, he's leaking. Not much. Actually, I'm going to call it quits on that one. Let's try. So the real problem is... There we go. I'm going to use this for a little demo. This is now one destroyed glass. And if I put a little methanol in there... Methanol is absolutely fantastic for this sort of stuff. Should just be the vapor as well. So I should be able to pour vapor in there. No? There we go. Methanol vapor can enter too much better. Cool, eh? Anyway, so that didn't work too well. So let's move them out of the way. Let's try one last attempt with glass. All that we need. Okay. okay. Right. Let's see if the thin wall. So I think what was mostly responsible for cracking the other one was the fact that it was a thick wall. And so with a thick wall, you're contracting the top but not the bottom, and that's what stresses glass and causes it to crack. So here we have a thin wall conical glass, and also I'm going to try and fill up with liquid nitrogen, which thus far seems to be a lot more successful. Okay, now let's get into the sausages. Okay, one sausage. And let's give it one, two, three, four, five. Five seconds. Five seconds, and it's only slightly cold to the touch. Let me get in for a thermometer, all right? Well, the infrared thermometer says, is this thing big enough? Oh, it's down to about 14 degrees. So, five seconds only gets you down to about 14 degrees. So, let's go in again. It's going 10 seconds this time. 10. Now, okay, slightly, still soft to the touch. And now the temperature is down to 2 degrees. Oh, let's reset that again. Let's, let's see, I'm going to use the other end. Reset. Let's go in for 20 seconds this time. Sausage in liquid nitrogen. Oh, I can feel it's hardening. 15, six. oh, this is going to be cold. Okay, 20 seconds. Now, Frozen on the outside. Temperature is only minus four. Minus two, minus four, that sort of thing. So it's frozen just about on the outside. So this this one is now 
four degrees on the outside. Another one. Okay, 16 degrees on the outside. Let's put them in folks. Feeling hard in that. 30 seconds, I think. So it's not actually, you probably have your fingers in there for quite a long time. It'll, it'll burn on the outside. But okay, so that's 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, we're now down to minus 10. Let's try it that way. Oh, that's more like it. Minus 48. On the outside, so and it's up frozen. Yeah, it's now frozen. Uh, it's frozen five millimeters. The the center is still soft after thirty seconds. So let's fill it back up again. Right, so that's now at 11 degrees on that end. Bye bye, Mr. Sausage. Let's keep him in for a full minute. So, when it gets down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, you'll be able to tell because it will stop boiling around the sausage. And this is going to be, I think. This will only be down to about minus 50. <laughs> We're going to be well off the bottom here. Okay, one minute. And the sausage reads... Ah, no, it's off the bottom. It's lower than minus 50 in the sausage. You can see where it's frozen. And if I try and chop it, now it's now completely frozen. Completely frozen all the way through point where and it says it's only minus 23 but that's still pretty bloody cold it's like Siberian winter cold okay so that's freezing sausages in the good nitrogen okay so here I have two uh, clocks one runs on clockwork the other is digital, it's got an L liquid crystal display and it runs on batteries. So the question, which one of these will stop working first if I were to dump them in liquid nitrogen? Now, originally I had intended to use the Perspex box, but unfortunately that was somewhat destroyed. So, um, what I'm going to use instead is this, which is the little baby, uh, very improvised thermos mask we've been using all week. So what I'll do is I'll dump that in like that. And then I'll dump that one in like that, and we'll see which one stops, stops working first. Now would be the time, if you feel brave, to actually put your bet on which one will, which one will stop working first. So, this can stop working on a number of grounds. When it actually fills up with liquid inside, that viscosity can stop the, the clockwork from moving. When it gets very cold, the springs will change their physical properties and there won't be spring anymore, so that will stop it. Or, with this, you've got all sorts of things that can go wrong with this. The integrated electronics can stop working when they get very cold. The battery voltage will change when it gets very cold. And the liquid crystal, it's liquid of course, <laughs> won't be liquid for much longer. And I've got no idea what happens when liquid crystals like this freeze. Do they just go black? Do they just stop moving? Or, and even more importantly, do they start working again when they defrost? Even more interesting, and this guy's actually got a temperature on it. So we'll see what happens there. 
Okay, so I'm going to fill that up with liquid nitrogen and we're going to dunk these and see what happens. Mm -hmm. 